All right. Um, I'm Rachel. If you've been tuning in to uh, the morning sessions, you might know me. You might have seen me on Kaggle. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit of background about me. I do have a PhD. Um, I don't know how much I use it in my day-to-day -day work, but uh, I do have a very fancy piece of paper that's on my wall. And every so often I look at it and it's like, hmm, that was five years. Um, and my PhD is in linguistics, um, specifically NLP, uh, computational linguistics, so more on the computational side. And during grad school, I became more and more and more and more and more computational. Uh, and by the time I left, I was, you know, ready to be a data scientist. Um, and before that, I was an undergraduate student, also in linguistics. Uh, you might notice a theme. Um, and in undergrad, I decided that what I really wanted to be when I grew up was a popular science communicator about linguistics. So like, uh, sort of like your Carl Sagan, Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, not Bill Nye, because he's not like a scientist in a specific discipline that he talks about. Um, and I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And I started a blog and I started on Twitter uh, and I posted, um, you know, blog posts about, you know, sort of intro linguistics things. Um, and I sort of kept that up kind of as I went through grad school. Um, and I also started talking more and more about NLP and data science and the things that I was becoming more interested in. Um, and I slowly... <laughs> really slowly, um, started to grow a following. So I don't actually know how many Twitter users I had before uh, March 2017, because I just, I didn't write it down. The Twitter data only goes back um, three months. And this happens to be the first time where somebody uh, archived my Twitter profile on the Wayback Machine. Um, and in March 2017, I had uh, 1,200 Twitter followers. Uh, and in March of 2019, on the same day, I had 1,100 followers. Um, and that was in big part due to the fact that I started working at Kaggle and I had, um, you know, time to create more content and reach out to people um, and continued to um, interact with the community on there. Um, and I've also made a lot of really dumb, really dumb mistakes, knowing the story that you want to tell, knowing what you want to do and then doing it. Um, I, I did not do that. Um, I had sort of a... Uh, if you like scroll way, 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 way back in my Twitter feed, at some point it's like, I saw a rabbit today. Here's a picture. Um, going to class, sure love the building the class is in or something. It's just more, more slice of life. Um, and then as it became more of a professional platform for me, I was like, oh, I should think about what I'm posting and how that reflects on me personally and how that might help me get a job. Um, and I did actually find this job, my Kaggle job, through Twitter because I met somebody at a conference and then he was like, oh, you should follow one of my advisees who graduated. And I did. And that was Meg Rizdahl, who has since um, left Kaggle for Stack Overflow. Hi, Meg, if you're watching. Um, and she posted about this job and she was like, hey, we're looking for people. Seattle is one of the cities you could be in. And I was like, I'm in Seattle, I'm a data scientist. So it was this sort of very organic connection I made just through meeting people at conferences and following them on Twitter and building a network. Um, and also this is the picture I use of me on literally every platform. Uh, and I think, I think it looks like me. I know the lighting's kind of bad in here. So what is personal branding? Um, the way that I think about it is what is your public image? When people think about you, what do they think about? And if you, even if you haven't considered your personal brand, um, you already have one, right? And you can't necessarily control it. You can't control what other people think about you, but you do have a lot of influence over it. Um, so in my early days of Twitter and blogging, my personal brand that I was trying to develop was like, hey, linguistics, popular science, yay. Um, and at this point, it's more like data science, but also I want to cover technical content in detail. I really want to um, spend time working through math and, and help other people do that same thing. Um, so you can sort of think about some people that you might know um, in, the, in the online space. And I spent some time and I just thought about like three people. So Cher, um, she's really active on Twitter. She uses a lot of emoji um, and she talks about politics a lot. And that's how I think of Cher as online presence and her personal brand. Um, Andrew Ng, uh, machine learning expert, educator, um, maybe a little bit dry. <laughs> Uh, I think we've all we've all at least peaked at the, the machine learning course, um, but you know, very sound technical content. Um, and this, uh, I just included a picture of a brand. So those of you, depending on your your sort of comfort with English, um, a brand is like a the original uh, use of it was like a stick that was on fire that you could use to like mark things. Uh, and then they added branding iron. So these are really popular in the uh, American West to, to brand cattle or livestock. So you know who it, who it belongs to. Um, and it's sort of very recognizable. It's like, oh, I associate this goat or whatever with this person. So 
some etymology. Got to bring the linguistics in. Uh, and I'm actually going to have you guys do a quick exercise. I have a timer. Uh, nope, that one's for 10 minutes. I actually want one for 20 seconds. Uh, I want you guys to spend 20 seconds, and I'm going to start the timer, and I'm going to sit here and stare at you, uh, and write what you want to be known for. What do you want your personal brand to be? So that could be you're really good at writing code, and it's very easy to use, and that's what you want people to think about when they think about you. Or maybe you're a researcher, and you work on optimization, and that's what you want people to think about. Uh, or maybe you make a lot of memes, and you want people to think about you as like, oh, the funny machine learning meme person. So. 20 seconds, take some time, notepad, on your phone, wherever. Write down what you want to be known for, starting now. It is up. All right, that was 20 seconds. Uh, and hopefully you have a little list um, of things or maybe one big thing that you want to focus your brand around. So once you have an idea of what you want your brand to be, what do you do with it? So for me, um, I think about my personal brand as a filter. So to help me choose what I want to share online on whatever platform I'm using. Uh, I'm going to talk most about Twitter because that's where I'm most active, but LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, I know a lot of people use WeChat, um, Slacks, wherever it is that you're, you're sharing content online. Um, so my brand, I mentioned, used to be like linguistics that make it fun. Uh, and these days, it's I would define it as folksy, non-trivial data science. So it's not super um, slick. Not a lot of my stuff isn't super produced. These slides that are just like black text on a white background is sort of the Rachel <laughs> visual brand. Um, non-trivial, I, like I talk about the math. I really want to make sure we understand what's going on in the code. And I will take a long time to do that if necessary. Uh, and then data science is sort of the, the general topic. Um, so having this in mind, it lets me prioritize my, my time. Um, I don't edit my live stream videos because that's still, it's still on brand for me if it's a live stream and it's just recorded and people can watch it back. Um, I would call maybe, maybe homespun or informal is how I would talk about my sort of visual brand identity, if you will. Um, and also it helps me decide what to share. So I have a lot of linguistics friends. I still keep up with the linguistics literature. Um, a lot of my followers do not care. <laughs> Um, if, if Chomsky's trying to add a new, you know, operation to minimalism, that's probably like absolute nonsense to most of you. Um, so even if that's happening and it's sort of interesting and, and my community is talking about it, I'm probably not going to share it because it's not on brand for my online presence, if that makes sense. Um, I am uh, on a lot of online communities and I've also done a lot of research on sort of social communities um, in my, my dark days as a, uh, as a researcher. Not dark days, but um, I don't really do that anymore. Um, and I sort of think of a taxonomy of ways of being in an online community, um, whatever that community is. Um, so consumers or lurkers are people who go to a community receive content, maybe you upvote some things, you like some things, but you don't produce a lot of content. Maybe you don't tweet if you're on Twitter. Um, and this is the type of account where if you have an account like this on a particular platform, you're probably not going to be building your brand there. You're just sort of going to be receiving things. So this is kind of how I use like Facebook. Like I, I look at pictures of people's dogs, but I don't post a whole, post a whole lot. Um, and then there's aggregators. So these are people who find useful resources and share it. Um, if you are trying to think about being an aggregator, um, I encourage you to really think about what's the most useful or most novel thing you could share. Um, there's like, you know, a quadrillion people who have shared various data science cheat, cheat, cheat sheets on Twitter, um, and they're not all necessarily going to be useful for everybody. And if I, you know, see someone who's posted like six more all in a row, I might unfollow them because that's not super useful for me right now. Um, and I'd say no, the, no more than two to three retweets a day if this is the sort of um, thing that you're focusing on. Um, and this will help you grow your brand, but not as much as being a producer. So producers create new content. Um, a, so you might produce YouTube videos like Siraj, or um, I'm not writing a whole lot of blog posts these days, but every so often I will. Uh, I write a lot of tutorials, I'm not really writing research papers, but whatever it is that you're producing, new things that you're writing or creating or filming, or um, maybe you're doing a blog, no, um, 
podcast. That's what I'm thinking. So you have voice recordings. Um, whatever that is, when you're making new content, I would call you a producer. And those are the people that I'm most likely to follow and the people who are doing the most to build their brand online. I know that not everybody has time to like record a podcast in the evenings because maybe you have four children and a full-time job and that's enough. Um, and that's absolutely fine. I think this is just a helpful way to think about being a member of a community and how you fit into each of the communities that you're a part of. Um, and finally, I have a good tweet and a bad tweet just to talk about. I made a fake tweet um, just to give you an example of um, people who are producing content or aggregating content, how you can maybe do a better job. So this tweet here, looking for hashtag ideas for hashtag projects to work on and hashtag data science. Help, please. Um, this is a fake tweet. I made it up. Um, but if I saw someone and this was in a tweet that they tweeted, probably I wouldn't follow this account. Um, so one thing is that it doesn't really follow the norms of the specific um, platform that it's written on. So in Twitter, especially in technical and machine learning Twitter, people don't generally use a lot of hashtags. And so on Instagram, people do use a lot of hashtags. So if I made an Instagram post with no hashtags, people might look at it and be like, oh, she doesn't really know what she's doing on Instagram. She's not Instagram, sorry, LinkedIn. Those are both LinkedIn. Um, she doesn't really know what she's doing. She's not a good member of this community. She hasn't taken the time to learn the norms and people might be less willing to interact with me. Um, also, for me, as someone just interacting with this, it's not going to add much value to my Twitter feed. Um, I mean, I guess sometimes I have projects that I was like, oh, it'd be cool if somebody did that. Um, but I don't really have like a lot of ideas just sitting around that I can, um, you know, whipped up. And even if I did, this wouldn't necessarily be the best way for me to share them. Like if I was just like, hey, random person, I'm going to reply to you. Um, and I definitely talk back and forth with people on Twitter. I'm not saying never ask for help. Um, but this doesn't necessarily... <laughs> drive me to interact with this person. Um, and it's also really focusing on what this person wants and not supporting the community. So uh, a sort of a, a different example, this is a real tweet, it's by data science Renee. Um, and Renee is also asking for something. So she says, reply with your favorite recently published books, I'm curious to, CC Hunter Owens, and this is a quote tweet. Uh, and the tweet she's quoting says, what books slash resources, et cetera, should uh, be on a getting started with Python or R for data science list? I realize all my resources are three plus years old now. So she's asking for something. She's asking for recommendations of recently published data science uh, literature, but she's doing it in a way that helps the community as a whole. Um, she's curious. She's helping somebody out. Um, there are some replies that people are talking about things that have been recently published, so that's useful for me. Um, and this seems like an account I do want to follow, and I, I do follow Renee. She's great. Um, because she is providing use for me as, a, as someone who's interacting with her. Um, and also not all of her tweets are like this. So um, she recently hosted a conference and she posted a bunch of slides and talked about um, what was going on in the conference and I learned a lot of cool things from there. So I think that's my last slide. Oh, nope, I have one more slide with the review. Um, so just to review, personal brand, how you are perceived online. You have some control over it, especially with what you choose to share. Um, the more you do to support the communities that you're in, the more likely you are to build an audience in that community. Um, and just a final note, I know I mentioned some numbers in here, like numbers of followers. I wouldn't recommend stressing about this unless it's part of your job. Um, but if you're just interacting um, with people to learn things, to make connections, um, I wouldn't necessarily focus on it. Uh, and also, follower distribution on most platforms is highly, highly skewed. Um, it's like the, um, oh, it's the statistical paradox where all your friends have more friends than you do. Rich get richer? I think it's rich get richer. Um, anyway, more than 95% of Twitter accounts have less than 500 followers. So don't be like, unless I have a thousand followers, I'm not a real Twitter. It's fine. Um, the thing that's really important is building connections, making friends, learning new things, and being part of a community. And it's those organic connections that at least for me have been the most valuable. So that's what I have to say about branding.